Before I begin this overview of the Digital Lurb Library, I will introduce myself. I am Sue Willits, one of the librarians at the Combined Library of the Institute of Classical Studies and the Hellenic and Roman Societies for over 30 years now, and I have a special interest in databases and in promoting their use. I would like to add that the publishers have given me permission to offer this guidance. This presentation is intended as an introduction to the database version, listed on our catalogue as the Digital Lurb Library. My aim here is to show the main features of the database, giving users a starting point for their own exploration. I will start with the browse function, which is how to retrieve works by individual authors or with a known LERB volume number, and then to search within that text. This will be followed by the basic search, with options to choose to search only Latin or Greek text, or to search both. I will also explain the use of the Greek keyboard. Then I will cover advanced searching for more precise searching combining sets of words. The last section will be about saving your results, but to do this you will need to set up a free personal account with the publisher. The next slide shows the login procedure for members of the Combined Library of the Institute of Classical Studies and the Hellenic and Roman Societies. A library card is needed to use this database, so please get in touch if you don't have one. For anyone viewing this who belongs to another institution, you will need to check with them how to access this database. The first step is to access the library catalogue using the internet link and then log in using your details. This slide shows the results of entering Digital Lurb Library into the title search section of the catalogue. Below the word connect on the left, a link on the right called access with iClass membership leads to the database. This slide shows a rather attractive home page which has a shelf of the lower volumes with their red and green spines. As you may know, the Greek texts have green covers and the Latin red covers. The small size of the physical volumes comes from the original concept that they were designed to fit into a gentleman's jacket pocket and so easily carried. Both the browse and search functions appear on this home page as well as on the left a link to the history of the series called About the Library. And on the right, under Using the Library, there are very detailed help pages. The arrow which I've added on the left is pointing to Browse. And from here, by clicking on Author, you see a row of letters A to Z from which to select your author. The other options here are to choose from either Greek or Latin authors. And on the left side of the screen, you can narrow your choice to search by prose or poetry, by time period, or from over 50 subject areas. For example, under Greek authors, by choosing comedy, a list of over 100 volumes is shown to include comedy plays and fragments. The other option is selection by lerb volume, and these are listed from number one onwards, and there are currently over 540 titles. It is, I think, unlikely that you will know the volume number, so the easiest way to find the text you want is to use the find function, control key and the letter F, to search for a word in the title such as papyri or remains for remains of old Latin. Just for now, please notice the top arrow I've added on the right hand side which is pointing to search. I'll come back to this later. For now, I am going back to the author search and the slide here shows the results of clicking on the letter V. There are six authors shown and for my example I have selected Barrow. As you may know, Barrow is the second author in the printed volume which is headed up by Cato, since both have written works on agriculture with the same title. Having selected Barrow, there are two works by him shown in the Digital Lurb Library. To select the text on agriculture, click on the title link which is in italics. The database takes us to the first page of the text and not to the contents and introduction as in the printed volume. The database displays the page with the Latin on the left and the English translation on the right. Clicking on the small black arrow on the centre edge of the right hand page allows the user to turn the page one at a time, which is fine if the section you need is near the beginning. But to move further on in the work, enter a page number in the Go To page box at the top right hand side of the screen. A disadvantage of the database is it is not possible to make a direct search for a book or line number, but it can be done in three stages, and I will show this process later. An important feature on this first page is the link provided by the LERB volume number. Here it is LCL283, 
on the top right of the page and shown in red. Greek texts have the numbers in green. But before we see where this link takes us, I would like you to notice the subject categories allocated to this work, displayed at the bottom of the page. I've added an arrow to show the three allocated to this work, which are prose, agriculture and didactic. After clicking on the lab number, we get more information about the volume. First, we see an image of the cover of the print volume, then a summary about the author's life and the work. But notice there's also information about Cato above that of Varro. And below this, the top of the table of contents. The rest is displayed on the database, but could not be fitted on this slide. This slide shows the results of clicking on the subject category Agriculture. There are currently 18 related works which you may wish to search in addition to Varro. Of the 18 texts listed, Latin texts are shown with a thin red line to the right of the screen and Greek texts with a green line. Again, these lines are on the far right and not able to be captured on this slide. Once a text has been selected, it is possible to switch from browse to search using the option search within work. And this is a new box which pops up on the screen, usually on the lower left hand side. As an example of a search, I have used the word cattle and there are 40 results in Barrow. The words are shown highlighted with a grey box around them. The results page shows the number of items which are displayed on the page. Here it is set to 10, so there will be 4 pages of results. The choices are easily reset to 20, 50 or 100 and the number of pages are adjusted accordingly. Clicking on the title of the work for each result takes you to the full page of the text. In this example, there are two words highlighted. Note here that to quote the exact line reference, you will need to find the line numbers from the left-hand page. It is worth pointing out that a search on cattle will not find related words such as cow and calf. But it is possible to use the logical operator to expand a search to include other related words. In this case, by using the word OR in capital letters, you can search for the presence of either cattle or cow or calf. By doing this, five more results are found. This slide shows the same search in the form of a diagram of three overlapping circles and the mathematical logic behind this type of search. However, to limit a search where you might want two or more words to be found close together, the operator word to use is AND. An example here would be wine and Spain. And keeping with the Varro text, there are three results. I will now move on to the basic search option, which is also accessed from the home page. This is a free text search of the whole of the LER volumes, covering not just the text, but also the notes, introduction and indices. The basic search is a keyword search and can be made in English, Latin or Greek. To search in Greek, you need to click on the keyboard icon. I've added an arrow here to show its location to the right on the search box. Once you have called up the keyboard, you simply click on each letter to drop them into the search box one by one. Searching for a phrase is possible, and the way to do this, as you would with other databases, is to enclose the words between double quotation marks. But it's worth considering when it's a good idea to use this feature, when it might be too restricting, as in the example I've chosen. A search for the phrase Mount Vesuvius between quotation marks produced 10 results, while the word Vesuvius on its own produces 38, so far more which will be useful. I've popped in an image here to illustrate the volcanic crater, and this is from an 18th century borrow sketchbook in the Wood Diaries collection, owned by the Hellenic and Roman Library. The left hand side of the screen shows options for limiting the results to either Greek or Latin and in this case clicking on Greek reduces the number of results to 10. Other options are to limit by poetry or prose, by time period or by subject area. When you have a set of results there is an option to sort them by author, by title or by date of translation. To show the results click on the link below the author which has the link show results within. Now I'll move on to the advanced search and the link for this is in a very small size font under the main search box on the right hand side so I've added an arrow to show its position. 
From here, a set of boxes appear which allows more precise searching. Note here that there's an option to select a time period. The screen presents the user with drop-down boxes to fill in, and this slide shows the nine options, some more useful than others. One of the choices is to limit the search to just the translation by selecting Recto, the right-hand page in the print volumes, or to search the Latin or Greek text on the left side by selecting Verso. This slide shows a diagram with two sets of overlapping circles to illustrate a search using a combination of the logical operators AND and OR. My example here is a search for either of the words arid or dry, but in combination with either land or agriculture. By using the truncation option here and putting an asterisk after the letter R, this will retrieve agriculture as well as agricultural. This slide shows how this search will be entered in the search boxes using OR with the first set of words, followed by AND and then OR again with the second set of words. There's a clickable button on the left hand side to add in extra rows. It can be useful to be able to specify that you want to search not just the main text but also the introductions and indices known as front and back matter, as well as the notes. The example here repeats the word rainbow for the different sections. For comparison, a basic type of search for this is 86 results, but using the advanced search, specifying the extra sections gives a total of 125. This extra number might be due to the number of times it appears in the indexes, but it's worth considering this type of search. The sidebar on the left allows a narrowing of a search result to either Latin or Greek, and the results are immediately adjusted. Since each text is categorised as either poetry or prose, and also allocated to genres as well as time periods, these can all be used in the search process. Depending on the results of a search, it is easy to reverse a choice using the back arrow at the top of the screen to go back one or more steps. Or you can remove choices by clicking on the very small green cross next to the search word, or the one marked clear all to make a fresh search. The genre option is useful if you want to include fragmentary texts which exist in the LERB series, such as the volumes on comedy, lyric or philosophy. At the beginning, I said you can't go directly to a known reference in a text, but it is possible to do this, and the following three slides show this process. I have taken the example of Josephus, Jewish War, Book 5, Line 468. So, Step 1. Browse to select the author. Follow through to the title of the work. Click on the LERB Classical Library number. The process continues as follows. Scroll down through the contents to reach Book 5, which is to be found in Volume 3. Now select Book 5, which we see runs for over 175 pages. Now estimate as best you can the approximate page number and enter this in the go to page box. Then it's a matter of moving forwards or backwards to find the right section. It may be quicker to use the go to page again if your guess is not good enough. Now finally we see the section 468 on page 148. I have marked this with a blue line around the text. Many users will want to save results for study, and this is done by setting up an account known as MyLerbs. But this step needs to be done before making searches and before logging into the site. When you want to do this, go to the website Lerb Classical Library from a browser, and at the very top of the screen, click on Create Profile. It's possible to share your results, but this needs to be done with someone who also has a MyLerb account. A two-minute YouTube clip created by the publishers includes the sharing option. The link is mentioned here. I've included a slide here which is to show that there are two ways of citing a LERB volume in your work if you need to do so. Either reference the work as you would a print edition or use the digital object identifier which is found in small print beneath the left hand page.
As mentioned at the beginning, this is an overview of the Digital Lerb Library and much more detail about browsing and searching is provided by the publisher to be found from the link using our library. The separate link about our library is a history of how the Lerb Classical Library was started and is well worth reading and the abbreviations link is also useful. The frequently asked questions will help too, but as with any database it's a matter of becoming familiar with the options. Also it's important to remember that this resource is based on the printed volumes and does not set out to provide the coverage or type of searching provided by the Thesaurus Lingua Graecae or the Library of Latin Texts. Thank you for listening and watching. I hope you find this database useful for your research.